Next up, Derek. Hey, I'll be able to get to the one, but that is fine. That was great info from Alan. Um, so I had two. The one I'm going to talk about actually goes along kind of with Alan's. So um, for a while, um, Instagram, they've had this idea of virtual tables where you're able to pull in things from external systems, but you don't have to actually integrate it. It's actually using like a web service to um, create, read, update, and delete that data. So they actually have come out with a recently a preview that's called Business Central Virtual Table. You can install into your system from AppSource, and then that gives you um, like the OData providers and just some tables you can use to configure virtual tables that connect to Business Central data. So this might actually be payment terms where you don't necessarily need to bring them over, but you could see them in in CRM that link them to accounts that will have to have to integrate. So for the reason we came on this was uh, a client, they have orders and order lines where they once an order line has been shipped in Jeep in, uh, in BC, they want to lock it down in CRM. So we need we're not integrating those shipments from from BC to CRM, so we need to be able to query see if uh, an order line has been shipped so we can lock down the record. So to set this up for tables, so we have this business central virtual data source configuration table. Edit that record and pick our environment here. Um, I think these two are pre-populated for me and then I just had to put in my environment name and save it. Once I saved that environment name, it went and retrieved all my companies. So I just get a, a lookup field here to pick my company. Um, there's also also a step you need to do in Business Central. So rather than integrating from BC, you're just visualizing BC data in CRM like you could with a, a report or Power BI or something. Uh, yeah, so as you read, actually, you can also create an update from a virtual table. So if you wanted to create a BC record, you could do that. Thanks. Okay, this is Azure Active Directory Applications. So they have one in here out of the box, just Dynamics 365 Business Central for virtual tables. You just need to open that up and enable it. And that's what enables the connection between the two. So with that enabled and our configuration here set up, it's going to then go query all your tables. So it's going to pull those into this available available business central table table. We pull it up and look at the data. It's, it's queried out and it's added a record for every table from the from the various APIs available in, in business central. So out of the box, they have their the standard um, version. You know, B2.0 APIs, this is all out of the box business central tables we have access to. And then if we have custom ones, so we have a couple of custom ones for this client, they will pull those in as well. So that's useful if you have a, a table you need to access where you don't have access to it through the out of the box API. In our case, we're doing this warehouse ship line. If I edit that table and I set it as visible. And then when you save, that'll go through, get all your data and create a, a virtual table for you. You can also refresh your table here if you add new fields to it or you need to pull new metadata. Do that. 
So what that creates just adds this warehouse ship lines API with the virtual table and it has pulled in all the all the fields for me. So I can sort of treat this as any regular table. I, I can query it. I can create records, update records. Um, you can add um, you can add some relationships. I'm not sure if you can add them on the BC side for virtual tables. You might need to add those as like relations in your API to get those to pull in. So like here we have this a company, which is the lookup to the account. And that just came in through the through the API. So we have a have a relation in there for that. It's got you know views, forms you can add, you can modify and just use that like any other normal table. So here I've queried it, you can see it's pulling our data in. So it's just trying to figure out the filtering so I can check correctly, but it's pretty Nice having to do this out, having to custom build a API or some way to query BC. I can just pull it in and do normal queries. Pretty sweet. So if in, in layman's terms, if all you need to do is see the data, you don't have to interact with it or integrate it. This is your solution. Yeah, if you just want like like one way sync from BC. I think this would be a good a good fit for a lot of things. So could you dashboard on this? So if I had all orders for a particular tied to a particular account, can I do a chart? I think yeah. the answer is yes. Yeah, but that link to the company there, so you be able to build a build chart or dashboards off that. What about marketing? Yeah, I don't see why not. There might be some, I know, some limitations, um, but I'm not sure what they all are. And we've got pretty good documentation on this. I can find that and post that in the chat. Ask me what the limitations are with with the virtual tables. Scott's got his hand up. Yep. Yeah. So um, one of the concerns that we have around this, and and we haven't tested it, is basically for every row that you're because you're not pulling the data into dataverse for every row that you're pulling back and retrieving it's going out and selecting it or maybe it's smart enough to do a large uh, you know and say where it's in this or you know where it's greater than this or less and we don't know but it could be really stupid and for every row going out and making a separate request um, and so it could get really slow so um, you know at least the last time I talked to to Derek, we we didn't have an answer around that. So I don't know that it's a uh, you know dashboarding Power BI replacement because those actually pull the data into a place where um, they can do the the reporting off of it much quicker. Probably gonna have limitations on how you can filter because you know the CRM web API might support filtering options. The BC doesn't when it tries to translate, so I have to just kind of work through work through your scenario. Yeah, it's pretty seamless. Only took well, Brett Brett wrote the API for me to pull it in. It took him probably an hour, try the API, and then half hour to get it set up. That's well, pretty quick to get the data in, just now figuring out how to query it, make sure it's working. A lot quicker than building a your own way to query and code or something. Uh, one of the other reasons that we talked about using this was um, we could have done this through, um, you know, just JavaScript and calling out, uh, but at that point, you're stuck with what do we do with the credentials because your CRM credentials don't work in BC. Um, you need a separate bearer token for that. And so um, you either need to write something server side so that you're not exposing those or you just say, hey, world, here's how you log into my BC. Uh, you know, so uh, this solves that problem of what to do about credentials and how to set up the connection because it's all server side uh, and Microsoft's maintaining it. And that's, you know, 
what we saw as a huge advantage around that rather than trying to write something that we needed to secure.